Hi, I'm Paul Marcel. So I did a recent uh, six video dovetail series and I was using this fret saw along the way. And uh, I've actually had a lot of questions about this saw. So I thought I would just make a quick video to explain the differences between you know, a fret saw and a coping saw. So uh, you can at least decide which one of the two you might like. And then I'll talk about this specific one briefly so you can go where to go research it. Now this saw is a fret saw, which means that it takes actually scroll saw blades. And one of the things that a fret saw tends to do is there's a mechanism for tensioning it. So you're going to want to really tension this blade to keep it from being able to flex. Like right now, this saw is not tensioned. It's just mo moderately tensioned. And you can see it's pretty easy for me to just press up against it and flex it. But once I take this cam lock and I cam, now it's a lot more difficult to flex. Now in the case of a coping saw, like this mechanism here, you know, with the cam action, you're really going to be able to use, use this screw to tighten it up. And I'll go over this really uh, briefly in a moment. And when you do the cam action, I mean, it's pretty easy to put a lot of tension on here. Now, in the case of a coping saw, by contrast, the uh, blades aren't scroll saw blades. They're actually coping saw blades, which is basically a similar, it's a little longer blade, but it has two little nuts that go across it, two little pins. So they kind of look like Frankenstein on the other end there with the nuts. And what those do is they slide into a slot on here. But the tension is strictly dictated by how much this metal wants to expand and tighten it. So, you know, like they, a lot of people will say, you know, you end up putting a hole in your sternum when you're putting this on because you'll get it going, then you kind of, as you're pushing it in. Well, obviously, this makes for kind of a heavy saw. So to me, this thing here is very poorly balanced uh, just because they made this more rigid so that it could tension the blade better. But of course, there's a certain limit to the amount of tension they can put on it because you have to be able to bend it in by hand to put the blade on. So I find that these wiggle around a lot, especially like this, now this is not a very expensive model, so this is pretty much the cheapo one. Uh, but it, you know you can pretty much just wiggle this, and you can twist the blade any way that you want. So whenever I used one of these before, and I actually didn't buy this, I don't know why I have it, but I've tried it, and uh, it wiggles around and it weaves around all over the place. Now maybe a higher quality one doesn't do that, but uh, generally I think the problem is that you're limited to how much tension you can put on these. Now with the fret saw. I mean, it uses, these are scroll saw blades from uh, Pegas from Switzerland. Uh, so I have a number of them. Some of them are for metal, some of them are, are spiral, so you can go any direction that you want. They're skip tooth reversing teeth, uh, everything. With the reversing teeth, it's a little like those really nice Bosch clean cut jigsaw blades. So now the way that a, a blade like this gets installed into a fret saw is that, like in this particular model here, they have these two sort of screws on the saw blade. So if I undo that, I still had it tensioned a bit there. <laughs> Let me untension it so it doesn't do that to me again. So now with this undone, you can just pretty much pop the blade right out. And it's uh, so these screws are just going to squeeze on the ends of the blade. And you can see that there is no T on this. This is just a plain blade. So if I were to just slide it back in, you drop it all the way down into the bottom one and tighten the screw up. For the top one, you're just going to push that in as well. Now, what I'm going to do here is this top part moves, so it can slide up and down uh, because of the... So what you're going to do is you first put it in the bottom one that's going to hold it in place, and then after that you're going to drop this one as far down as you can, tighten up the nut on it, and now when you use this cam action lock, it's going to pull that blade up and tension it. So now it's all been tensioned. So I usually leave it off on the side untensioned just because it'll be better for the blade, and then tension it up. When it's this fast, you know, you don't really... You're not saving anything by keeping it tensioned. You can fine tune the tension by turning this brass screw. So when you when you tighten up this screw, you're kind of pulling this portion here up on your own so that you start a little bit uh, tighter before you even apply the tension. So you can get this thing really tight. Uh, in fact, uh, Lee Marshall, the guy who makes these, he says that with the titanium model, which is this gunmetal gray model, uh, you can actually tension it to the point where the blade will snap before the frame will even start to give. Uh, it's that rigid. He also makes an aluminum one. It's not quite as, as tensioned like that. You can't snap a blade in it, but uh, it, it, pretty, it gets pretty close. Now, Lee Marshall, as I mentioned, is the guy that came up with this. He's, he has a company called New Concepts. And what he did is, originally he started making a high precision jeweler saw. It's actually on a frame and it moves in certain ways and it's all very rigid like this. So the blades can be extremely tensioned for fine cuts. Uh, and then he took that design and moved it to uh, a fret saw. So that's why you've got this sort of truss design so that it can it can keep itself from flexing. So it's a higher end saw. It's made 
basically for jewelers, and this one here happens to be a model made for woodworkers. Now I say that because if you go to the new concept site, you're going to see a number of saws. They have some of these that are three inch, uh, three inch, five inch, and eight inch. Now what that is is that's the distance of the throat. The length of the blade is always the same, so all of them have the same length blade. It's just how deep the throat goes. So for a jeweler, they may like you know when they're dealing on a small bird's mouth where they're doing the cuts, they may want only three inches. It's going to keep that balance right there over the handle. Uh, whereas, you know, I don't know, they may have some uses for doing something with the larger 8-inch throat. Now there are woodworker models, and the woodworker models are all this size, the 5-inch throat. The reason there's a woodworker model is that the jeweler's saws, this portion here, that holds onto the blade, does not rotate. Those are fixed in position, so the blade is always out in front of the saw. For the woodworker models, if you were to detension this blade, now you can take this and you can rotate it. So you can rotate this blade around. And there are some positive stops, like here there's a positive stop and here for 90, so the blade is directly in front. If I continue to turn that here, you'll get it all the way to the end, and now it's at 45 degrees. So with this, if I were to rotate it the other way, since I'm a righty, so if I had it the other way, now I could actually cut across like this at the 45 degrees. So this means if you were doing, say, a hope chest or something like that, something really wide, and you're doing the dovetails, you could clean them out no matter how long that is, even though you only have a five inch throat, because you're always gonna be cutting above. Now, I didn't do that in my videos because for some reason when I do this, my eye keeps wanting to do that. So that's just me out of practice. Uh, you can use it though to go quite far. Now, as it turns out, I recently was talking with Lee Marshall and uh, I asked him if he could bring a spare handle to WIA. I'm going to WIA, so I was just going to pick up another handle off of him because I was going to give this as a template for uh, a handle to a friend of mine who can do some turning. Now, it turns out that he's actually bringing new handles to WIA, so that'll be a product that you can get, so you can get these swapped out to some nicer, you know, different types of woods. In my case, I actually would like it to be just a hair bigger is one thing I would, I would really like. I mean, okay, if it's going to be in a nice walnut or curly maple, that's great too but uh, I would like it to be just a hair larger for, for my big paws. <laughs> Give a look at the show notes for the links and you can, you can see if you like this saw. I really like this saw. I use it, of course, for the dovetails, but more than that, like the vanity I'm currently doing, the drawers get, uh, the, drawer, the applied drawer fronts get cut and these cuts were made all with the fret saw here. So, I mean, it goes tearing through this with no problem whatsoever. Uh, and it's nice that you can be very precise with it as well. So I find that I've been using it more and more 